Welcome to another episode of I Did Not Know That. I did not know that. This episode, Martin and Lewis, the myth of the 20 years of silence. The comedy team of Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis was maybe the most popular comedic team of all time. At their peak, their popularity can only be compared to rock stars like Elvis and the Beatles. And they were mobbed whenever they went out in public. The two had a strange chemistry that has never been duplicated. They were very different than any other popular comedy team up to that time, such as the Marx Brothers, Laurel and Hardy, or Abbott and Costello. Dean Martin was smooth, charismatic, and incredibly handsome. Plus, he could really sing. Jerry Lewis was usually wild and unpredictable. He could go from an out-of-control lunatic to a scheming loudmouth egomaniac and then to a vulnerable child sorry for his bad behavior all in the space of a minute. Jerry Lewis called their act the handsome man and his monkey. For some reason when they got together it was like lightning in a bottle and audiences were crazy about them. Neither one had been very successful on their own, but when they teamed up out of desperation, something magical happened. They went from being complete unknowns to appearing in films, radio, and television, and America couldn't get enough of them. Every one of the 16 movies they released made lots of money. One part of the reason for their success came from the fact that they were close friends in real life, and that feeling really came across while they were on stage. They loved being together and performing. But as the years went by, conflicts began to arise. Lewis, despite appearing childlike and affable on stage, was very different in real life. He was very sensitive. He was driven, controlling, and had a pretty big ego. The act consumed much of his life. Dean Martin was almost the opposite. He was much more laid back and would rather be golfing than acting. As time went by, he began to resent playing the straight man all the time. He said it was the same role over and over again while Lewis got all the praise and attention. The relationship grew more and more strained until it finally blew up when they were scheduled to film The Delicate Delinquent. Martin was supposed to play a policeman and he felt the role of a cop just wasn't right for him. When he mentioned that to Lewis, Lewis reportedly said, well then we'll just have to find someone else. To which Martin said, start looking boy, and angrily left. After this, they stopped speaking to each other and soon their attorneys were brought in to begin the dissolution of their partnership. Their final appearance as a team was at the Copacabana nightclub and occurred 10 years to the day of their first appearance together. Lewis did go on to make The Delicate Delinquent, but with actor Darren McGavin playing Martin's role. The world was shocked by their split, and much like the Beatles, many fans dreamed of the day that the two would get back together and maybe do a film or two again, but it never happened. The bitterness was apparently so deep that the two never spoke to each other again. 20 years later, in 1976, when Jerry Lewis was doing his annual Labor Day telethon for muscular dystrophy, Frank Sinatra surprised the nation with this. <laughs> Martin and Lewis were finally together again after 20 years of not speaking to each other. Or so the story goes. But is that what really happened? You've heard the phrase, it's complicated, when referring to a relationship. Well, that phrase probably originated with the friendship between Dean Martin and Jerry Lewis. Let's take a closer look at what happened between their breakup in 1956 and Dean's appearance on Jerry's telethon in 1976. But first I wanna give a shout out to Kaylee Brown Thompson over at her YouTube channel called Donna Ziffy for providing much of the information and video clips for this episode. Really, I could not have made it without, uh, without her help. I had not been aware of much of this information uh, during this 20-year gap, and so her, her, uh, her YouTube channel and her website was, 
was incredible. Visit her YouTube channel at the link that I will post below. She's got some awesome stuff there about Martin and Lewis. She also has another YouTube channel called Give the Chance a Kid on YouTube that has more clips related to Lewis and his career. And if you want even more incredible information about Martin and Lewis, go to her website called Dark Horses Assemble Here. It also has a wealth of information and I'll post a link for that below. So let's take a look at what happened after the breakup. There's no doubt that there were some really bad feelings that came out of their last few years together. Martin had been fed up with Lewis's ego and he hadn't been happy with the films they made. He claimed they were Jerry Lewis movies and said he had to play an idiot in every one of them. During their last film, Martin reportedly told Lewis, you're nothing to me but a dollar sign. Years later, Lewis confessed that he was in fact a big reason for the breakup. He said, Quote, I was just too impressed with myself. I was too worried about me. I was selfish in those days, and I wasn't thinking about anybody but me, and I ignored my partner. Lewis said of their separation, The stupidity of that I cannot expound on. The ignorance of that is something I hope I'll always forget. Jerry Lewis was well known for holding grudges and avoiding people that he didn't like. Martin also had a reputation of being somewhat remote in his personal life, keeping just about everyone at arm's length. But Lewis's relationship with Martin was different. Lewis idolized Martin and saw him as the big brother he never had. Despite their broken relationship, he said many times over the years that his love for Dean never changed. Dean Martin's daughter, Dina, said they loved each other. So how accurate is it that after their breakup, they never spoke for 20 years until that reunion in 1976. So let's take a look at some of the newspaper clippings and even some footage throughout the years and we can see a different story emerge. It shows between 1956 and 1976 they got together as many as 10 times. Certainly their relationship after the 1956 breakup was never the same, but as we are about to learn, the two most certainly did share many times together after the breakup and even perform some skits together, which really surprised me. We can see as early as 1957 in this newspaper clipping that both Dean and Jerry popped in to watch each other rehearse television shows and it states they talked for a bit afterward. They both joked around and wished each other lots of bad luck. They can be seen here together with Frank Sinatra in 1958 at the Coconut Grove to watch a performance by Judy Garland. This next video clip is truly remarkable and a lot of fun. Jerry was a guest on the Eddie Fisher show in September of 1958 when suddenly his act was interrupted. Let me do what I have to do. Will you do me a play? Let me do what I have to do. Jerry, I, I would be very... Just very... don't sing. Do what I... For those who might not know, Dean had a huge hit that year with a song called Return to Me, and it goes to show just how quick Lewis's mind was when he sang that out to Martin as he was leaving. By the way, the guy who pulled Dean Martin off the stage was Bing Crosby. Here's another article from 1960 that tells of them getting together on a stage in Las Vegas and even performing a few comedy routines together. Next is some fun footage of Jerry and Dean from 1961 at the Coconut Grove to see Eddie Fisher perform there. They seem pretty comfortable and you can see them joking around with each other and the crowd. There were other meetings of the two throughout the years and you can visit Kaylee's Dark Horse website I mentioned to see them all. So it's clear that while they never had the close relationship they shared before their breakup, the two did occasionally meet and even perform a few skits together after their breakup. So 
Why did they let the world think they hadn't spoken for 20 years? I don't know. It may have been a private joke between the two. But regardless, it's kind of nice to know that the two performers who had so much magic together and had been as close as brothers at one time could get past some of the old hurts and bitterness and become friends again. And that's a lesson for all of us. We will close this episode when Jerry surprised Dean on stage for his 72nd birthday. I am here to present you with this happy birthday cake for 72 years of joy that you've given to the world. And uh, why we broke up, I'll never know. Uh, <laughs> me either. I have no idea what happened. And because I, I was a, a Jew and you were a Dago. No, no, why. you're the Dago, I'm the Jew. Oh, I know what that's, that's what we could never get straightened out. You surprised me. I mean, I love you. I love you. Well, that wraps up another episode of I Did Not Know That. Remember to help this channel by liking this video and subscribing. Thanks for watching.